kicked off a little bit uh, for our television audience, <laughs> but we're here now, okay? But Jesus, this is one of the things that he was critical of the Pharisees. He said to them, and these were the spiritual leaders of that day, and he said to them, um, you choose against me and you remain in spiritual darkness. So as we go through 2021, let's challenge ourselves uh, to, to make sure that we don't have closed eyes and that we see the light, that the light shines upon us, that it illuminates us, and that we then can go out and illuminate those around us. So in our series uh, this January, we are uh, reminding ourselves at the beginning of this new year that we are called to a life of purpose. We don't live a random life. We don't live a, a life of easy come, easy go, a life of whatever, but we live a life of purpose. We live a life of faith. We, we place our faith in the one person Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, and we live a life that hopefully does not waver, that a uh, life that is consistent. So last week we studied uh, the first part of King David's Psalm 101. And so we'll be looking at Psalms 101 and then we'll finish up uh, in the New Testament in Colossians chapter number 4 and we'll look at the beginning of first verse 5. David, if you remember, gave us four key characteristics in our Bible study last week when we talked about an aimless life. David gave us four characteristics. These were, these were personal characteristics that he identified that he must have in his own life in order to have spiritual eyes that are open. And, and absorb and receive the light. You may remember that. One was a life of consistency. One, one was a life of integrity. One was a life of humility. And one was a life of purity. So if we could um, characterize this, we would say that these, these were personal. These were King David looking within and recognizing that he needed to be a man of consistency, of integrity, humility, and purity. So we see that David is looking within, within his own heart. And so this would be um, a, a resolution that David is making. Now, if someone would look at chapter 101 in Psalms, and let's read the verses 5 through 8. If someone would read those for me, we're going to take a little different direction here with King David. So we're going to go from making um, resolutions within our heart, within ourselves, to now we're going to look outside ourselves at the world around us and how we can um, effectively uh, grow in Christ in the new year. So someone read verses 5 through 8 and we'll unpack those verses. Whoever slanders their neighbor in secret, I will put to silence. Whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart, I will not tolerate. My eyes will be on the faithful in the land that they may dwell with me. The one whose walk is blameless will minister to me. No one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. Every morning I will put to silence all the wicked in the land. I will cut off every evildoer from the city of the Lord. Okay, thank you, Daddy. So we see David is changing directions from the first four verses of his Psalm 101. You could call this David's statement of faith. You could call it his credo of life. But here he changes, and he no longer now is looking from within to live a life uh, 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 or his goals within. Now he is looking at his kingdom, his people, um, his, um, his circle of friends, his family, his career, his work. 
everything that is outside of David's heart and mind. Now he's looking without, and he is making a declaration. So now what, what David is doing is he's gone from looking within to now he's looking without. So we, we go from a personal where we commit to these characteristics, and then we go to what we would call our, our public life, and that would be uh, looking without. So as I look around here, we're all family. We all have family. We all have careers and jobs and, and, and work in the home and work outside of the home. We're all, um, we all have a circle of friends. We all have church family. We have neighbors. So now we're expanding out and, and what does God expect of us? And David gives us some great guidelines that we can look at. David basically is telling us here in these verses, he is saying, he is declaring, he is putting boundaries, margins, and non-negotiables into his life. And so what he does in his heart inwardly he now is transferring that to an outward um, uh, commitment as well. And so uh, it, is, it is for us, we see in verses 5 through 8, let's identify some of these, uh, some of these boundaries or non-negotiables that David had. Notice there in verse number 5a, the verses that Dottie read, um, and he talks about he talks about a slanderer. What's a, what's a slanderer? Say gossip. Okay. All right. Are you ever? Let me ask you this question. Are you ever going to walk away from someone like this <clears throat> with a encouraged heart, with a a pep in your step, with a? I, no, we're not. So David says, he says, as he looks without, he is just not going to be part of that. All right? That, that, that is wonderful advice. Look at, look at 5B. David also, he said, what else does he say here? He, he says, I'm not going to associate or, be, or allow my kingdom and allow my family to be what? Pride. Pride. Okay. So, so he talks about pride as well. What is, what, did, what is the number one sin that God detests? Pride. A proud, arrogant heart. Uh, why does he do that? Why does God detest pride in our lives, in our hearts? Yes, yes, yes. Somebody prayed this morning, or, or maybe we were talking before class, just how blessed we are to have drawn a breath this morning, gotten up, gotten ready, and come to church. We've already been blessed, folks, beyond what we deserve. There is no self-sufficiency in the believer. Our sufficiency is only in Jesus Christ. Christ. So, so David says, I'm not going to tolerate a prideful spirit. I'm not going to tolerate a proud people. Now notice in verse 6a, David says, my eyes shall be upon the what? Faithful. Faithful. All right. So now he's, he's saying, I'm not going to be associated with this, but I am going to associate myself with faithful people. You ever heard uh, uh, that verse in the Bible? I forget exactly where it is, but it, it says something like this. It says, bad company what? Corrupts. Corrupts. Bad company corrupts morals. Okay? So, it's kind of like, it's kind of like David is saying, I'm not going to be around bad company. I'm going to invest my life and my time in faithful people. Um, he says in 6b, what does he say? He says here in 6b, um, he says that uh, in the, I've got a New King James Version this morning, he says, he that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. So blameless, David is looking not for perfect people. There, there is none, okay? There was only one perfect 
human being, and that was the, the, the God-man, Jesus Christ himself. But you know what I'm talking about. People that are living as Christ has been an example. People that are truly trying to grow and live in the Lord. David says, I will associate myself with faithful, blameless, God-fearing people. That's who will be in my inner circle. That's who will be in my kingdom. That is who will be in my family. Um, notice verse 7a. He goes back and he identifies other uh, negative type of people that he will not tolerate in his declaration. All right, And that is, uh, notice verse 7a. He's not going to tolerate what? Deceit. Deceit. He is not going to tolerate the deceiver. We keep going. He, uh, he's not going to tolerate in 7b uh, someone that tells what? He's just not gonna, he's not gonna be part of that. And then lastly, in verse number eight, he says that he will destroy the what? Wicked. The wicked. Okay, so now, this is Old Testament language. This is Old Testament language, and we need to make an application to our lives today. So, what David has done here is he has come up upon a time in his life where he is spiritually evaluating himself, where he is challenging himself, where he is um, encouraging himself to go deeper in his relationship with the Lord, to, to become even more intimate to his Lord God. And so here he is recognizing these are the characteristics that I need in my personal life, all right? I need to be consistent, a man of integrity, a man of humility, and a man of purity. And then he goes further, and being a leader in his country, in his nation, in his family, and we all, as I look around, are leaders in our families and in our circle of friends and in our homes, then he is saying, and, and I am not going to be part of these type of negative people that have influence upon my life, but I'm going to seek out those that are faithful and blameless, and I'm going to build some margins in my life. I'm going to build some boundaries in my life. I'm going to put some non-negotiables into my life. And so taken as both a personal resolution and now a public declaration now we can see the power of a life that is grounded in the Lord now we can see that that transforming power begin to take place and begin to uh, make itself known in David's life um, so as we think about um, our lives today here we are January 3rd 20. 21. All right, and I look out and I see people that have adult children, young children, jobs, careers, uh, challenges, opportunities. I see all of that in all of us this morning. So here's the question for us in this new year as we think about our life and what we want to accomplish and how we want our life to count, then what changes can we and do we need to make in our lives? What changes can we and do we need to make in our kingdom? And we could substitute that word kingdom for our homes, our careers, our circle of friends, our habits, <clears throat> our marriages, our parenting, our ministry, and our goals. I don't know if you've ever been this way, but there was a time when I had to basically cut some people out of my life. I had to, I had to disconnect from some people in my life. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been uh, in a relationship where uh, you had some of these core uh, 
problems and what is what does it do it drags us down doesn't it it drags us down and 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 I had to take deliberate steps to disengage and disconnect so maybe maybe there's something in our lives that we God is speaking to us this morning and at the beginning of this new year and and we know that we need to seek out those that are faithful we need to seek out those that are blameless you'll never find someone perfect only the perfect lamb of God Jesus Christ uh, is worthy of our uh, of our love but there are people that we can surround ourselves with that can help raise us up we need to find those people we need to develop those relationships we need to get into those small group Bible studies we we, we need to let the light that Augustine talks about in his quote we need to let that light shine upon us brightly in 2021 so there's a couple of things that I've done that um, <clears throat> that I've been able to uh, uh, so we'll look at our life application so resolutions are more per personal declarations are more public okay so uh, if I ask you on a three by five note card on the front of that if I were to say to you what are your three major resolutions for this new year and then if I ask you to flip that note card over and write down your three declarations so your three personal goals your de uh, resolutions and then your your three public or declarations what would that maybe look like all right so think about that uh, this week maybe have some time to let God dwell upon you and 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 speak to him and do it simply sim with simplicity these do not have to be long and drawn out notice David there's only eight verses in Psalms 101 but wow when you get to that eighth verse there is no doubt where King David's heart and mind is he is simple he is straightforward and and he doesn't beat around the bush so I was thinking in my own life I was thinking so here are the three things that I would write about myself three personal resolutions okay number one resist a prideful attitude gosh how easy that is for me to look at what I have accomplished and what I have done and oh that is so dangerous and so wrong and such a slippery slope so one of the things that I'm going to do in 21 2021 is I'm going to resist this idea of look what I accomplished look what we accomplished and I'm going to I'm going to buckle down on this right here. Now God really got my attention uh, in the last 5 years and he really helped me with that. You pray for humility, you better watch out, buddy, cause God will show it to you. All right? So, but that's something in my DNA. It's there and I need to be cautious and careful and sensitive about it. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remain pure, okay? I'm a one-woman man, okay? I'm a one-woman man, all right? Have been for 44 years, and we've officially been married for 42, okay? I'm a one-woman man. Did you hear me say that? I'm a one-woman man. Okay, whatever that applies, that applies to me because... I need to guard that. I need to I need to build boundaries around that. I need to have margins. I, I need to absolutely have a non-negotiable attitude in that. And and thirdly, I desperately want to be a man of integrity. Okay? That is just something that's not given. It's it's earned. And so I I desperately want to be. So those would be you fill in your three by five note card but those would be kind of my my declarations my declarations how I want you to see me in public my declarations maybe would be something like this 
One, I surround myself with godly people. Man, that's why I am so careful about my inner circle, about my friend friends. You know, you got friends, right? Everybody's got friends. But then you got what you call, well, everybody's got friend friends. Okay, that's just friend friends. Then everybody's got friends. And then that circle gets a little tighter, doesn't it? And you have what you what I call my inner circle or the people that I know I can trust and that I can go to with anything at any time. Okay, so, so um, I'm going to surround myself with godly people. I'm going to surround myself with faithful and blameless people. Not perfect people, but people that are thinking and acting and living for God in the way that I am trying to do. And then together, we're going to hold each other accountable and we're going to build each other up, okay? And strength, that's, that's where growth and strength comes from. And then, I want to lead my family well, okay? I, I, I want to lead my family well. I don't want to say to my family, do as I say do. I want to say to my family, do as I do. You, you see, there's a difference there, okay? And thirdly, and I believe this is so important. I, I, my public declaration, uh, my third public declaration would be to use my God-given talents and abilities. God gives each one of us certain talents and abilities and gifts that he doesn't dole out to everyone else. I want to find those and I want to use them for God's glory and for his kingdom. So what would be this week your three personal resolutions and then your three public declarations. And your list will look different than mine. I just had a little more time to prepare and so I wanted to share that with you. Now let's turn the corner and look in Colossians chapter number 4 and let's look at verse 5. And uh, we're just going to look at this briefly and then we'll be out of here in just a couple of minutes. But uh, I just love time. I love uh, managing time. I love getting the most out of time. Um, I like uh, planning. I like lists. I like being productive. Uh, I could go on and on. I'm sorry, but again, it's just in my DNA. And so God helps me manage that and uh, helps me not to, you know, drive my wife completely crazy, but, you know, just a little bit crazy is okay every now and then. <laughs> all right, so, all right, somebody look at the first few words of Colossians chapter 4, number, uh, Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. All right, what's the first couple of words there? Walk Whatever translate, walk huh? Wisdom. Walk in wisdom. Okay, somebody else have a different translation. Be wise. Be wise. Okay. <laughs> The Living Bible says, make the most. A uh, Holman Christian Standard Bible says, act wisely. The New Living Translation says, live wisely. And then I thought this was a, a, a good translation. The, uh, the New American Standard Bible says, conduct yourself with <coughs> wisdom. Okay? All right, now, um, I, I want to ask you about this idea of time. When I say something to you about time, what do you think about time? T-I-M-E. What do you think about? Time flies. Stop it. Can't stop. <laughs> yeah, time flies. You can't stop time. Yeah. Everybody's got the same amount of time. Everybody's got the same amount of time. Do you know there's 168 hours in every week? Do you know that you got that this week? I got it this week. All God's children got 168 hours this coming week. You can't make more time. You can't make more time. All right, so let's do this real quick. You can't make time, okay? You can't borrow time, okay? You can't save time. You can't extend time. Do you know the only thing you can do with time? Waste. <laughs> you can't, yeah. You can make the most of it. Use it. Use it. That's the only thing you can do. You can use time, okay? So the question then becomes, as we go into 2021, it's not what we're going to do with our personal and public relationship with the Lord, 
but it's how are we going to use those 168 hours a week that God gives to us, okay? So let me, let me just, uh, let me tell you here in Colossians chapter 4, verse 5, there is a great, great teaching for us here. It is to live wisely, to conduct ourselves with wisdom. So, we're going to have 168 hours this coming week. Um, we're going to have that every week that the Lord lets us live here on this earth, okay? Unless we are able to grasp a view of eternity, all right, we are not going to be good time managers. We will not manage our time well. But if we can develop that viewpoint of time as eternity, then we can see God really at work in our lives to develop us, to grow us, to help us uh, grow closer to Him, to get nearer that light and to have our spiritual eyes opened even more then we are able to see that what I am doing right now, uh, every day, every day that I reach out to my grandchildren and somehow, some way, uh, invest in their lives and somehow, some way, share God's Word and God's being with them, you know what I'm doing? I'm investing in in time. I'm investing in eternity because they will grow up. They will have children. And so from generation unto generation as long as the Lord is. So if we begin to manage our time and we begin to couple that with our personal resolutions and public declarations, then we can start to turn this 2021 and we can really look back this time next year and see where God has really grown with us and in us spiritually. And I would just encourage you, if you have some time this week, there's some response and reflection of thoughts. Um, I, I would just encourage you to maybe take a little bit of time with this. I'm a big list maker. Um, I, I believe it's important to write it down. I don't think you can just think it. I think you have to write it down and I think you have to be able to measure your progress all right, so I would just encourage you sometime in the month of January, make yourself a list, very simple, of three personal resolutions. And I'm not talking about losing weight. Yeah, we all do that. I'm not talking about saving more money. Yeah, we all do that. I'm not talking about getting out of debt and all that stuff. Okay, that's all good. But unless those resolutions are tied to a spiritual truth and a spiritual application, they're going to fail, okay? So let's make that leap in 2021 and come over here and let's tie it down to the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the Word of God, for its power, for its transforming power. Thank you, Lord Jesus, what you, how you were just so patient with me, Lord. How you've just taken um, a knucklehead like myself, Lord, and how you're just so patient and you, you love me unconditionally. And I thank you for that, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for the people that you have brought into my life that are faithful and that are blameless. And I thank you, Lord, for the encouragement uh, that they bring to me. And, and I pray, Father, that we will be an encouragement to each other and that we will grow together in, in spirit and that we will grow together in the Word of God. Bless our time in worship. In Jesus' name we offer these prayers. Amen. Okay, thank you all.